everybody. So today we're doing a note on reviewing trigonometry from grade 10. So trig in grade 11 gets uh, quite a bit more advanced. So it's important that you have the basics of SOHCAHTOA especially, and then the sine law and the cosine law to help you find unknown side lengths and unknown angles. So let's first start with right triangles. With right triangles, there's two important parts, Pythagorean theorem and the primary trig ratio. So we of course have a squared plus b squared equals c squared, which gives you the Pythagorean theorem. C always being the hypotenuse. Also, if you're trying to solve for something like a, then that would be rearranged to c squared minus b squared, etc. Okay. Now, for the primary trig ratios, uh, if you have an angle theta, the first thing you should do is um, label the sides as opposite. So opposite is if you go directly across from theta, that's the opposite angle. And then the hypotenuse is the longest side. And then adjacent is the third one. Now the, the word adjacent means next to, so it's the uh, one next to the, the angle theta that isn't the hypotenuse. But then if you remember the acronym so ka toa So so, that means that sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So it's the ratio of opposite over hypotenuse. That gives you the sine ratio per theta. The cosine ratio, ratio per theta is adjacent over hypotenuse. And the tangent, or the tan ratio for theta is opposite over adjacent. Again, POA, opposite over adjacent. Okay, you just need to have these memorized. Uh, really, they're helpful because um, when you have a certain size of angle, that means that you know that the side lengths must have a certain ratio to each other. So when you know one of the side lengths, you can use that ratio to find the other side lengths. And that's all that sine, cos, and tan are, are just ratios. Uh, because uh, mathematicians found that right triangles always relate to each other that way. Now, all those ratios are now stored on your calculator, making it quite easy for you to use. Uh, but back in the day, <laughs> um, older teachers or people older than me would actually have a book full of, or at the back of their math textbook, they would have all of the trig ratios listed. Uh, but now they're all just stored in a calculator. So these are just known ratios for given angles. Okay, and they were developed hundreds and hundreds of years ago. All right, so you can use SOHCAHTOA to do two things, either to find the side length or to find an unknown angle. So in this case, we are given the angle 30 degrees. Now, the opposite, sorry, opposite is unknown to us, and the hypotenuse is known. Notice there's nothing going on with the adjacent. So we have O and H in place. You should think so. So sine is the ratio you should use. So the sine of 30 degrees is equal to opposite, which in this case is x, over hypotenuse, which in this case is 5. So now we'd like to solve for x, so you isolate x by multiplying both sides by 5, so you get x is equal to 5 times sine of 30 degrees. Now put that in your calculator to make sure you're using your calculator properly. Your calculator should be in degrees, and you get exactly 2.5. All right. Now, you might have other questions where, let's say you have a triangle like this, for instance, and you know that this is 3, but you don't know x. So in this case, you know adjacent, but you don't know hypotenuse. So a and h are the ones involved, so you would use cos. Oh, sorry, you need to know this angle, though. Let's say that that's, uh, I don't know, 21 degrees. So cos of 21 degrees would be equal to adjacent, so 3, over x. Now, sometimes people don't know what to do with this x. How do you isolate this x? Well, you need to multiply both sides by x to get rid of it on this side and bring it over to this side. So then you get x times cos 21 degrees equals 3. Okay? And then you just solve x equals 3 divided by cos of 21 degrees. So you can think about it that really uh, cos 21 degrees and x just switch places, but that's what's going on. You multiply both sides by x and then divide both sides by cos to solve for, for x there. All right, <clears throat> excuse me. So when you're trying to find the angle, first you need to see which uh, 
lengths you know. So in this case, you know opposite and you know adjacent. Hypotenuse isn't involved at all. So O and A, that's TOA, that's tan. So the tan of X, we don't know that angle, is equal to opposite, so 3 over adjacent, so 5. All right, now to solve for X, we don't divide both sides by tan. That doesn't make sense. Tan is an operation. It's not a number that we're multiplying. So we need to undo the tangent. So that in math is called the inverse. When you're undoing something, it means taking the inverse. So in trig, it's represented by this. Tan to the negative 1 of 3 over 5 is equal to X. So if we had X, we would take the tan of X and it would give us 3 over 5. But now we have that tan is 3 over 5 and we need to undo it to find what angle gave us that 3 over 5. So we're taking the inverse of tan, we're undoing that tan function. So you find the tan to the negative 1 button on your calculator, it's usually above the tan key, so you need, need to press second function, tan, usually. Okay, and then make sure you do 3 divided by 5 and your bracket. Um, sorry, and that is equal to x, so you should get x is equal to approximately 31 degrees. It was just under 31, I think, 30.9 or something like that. All right, so you need to be an expert in using SOHCAHTOA to find side lengths and to find angles. That's your first task, and that's always used in any right triangles. But if you don't have a right triangle, then you can use either sine law or cosine law. So to start with sine law and cosine law, you first have to uh, label this properly. So we usually label the angles with capital letters. So let's do A, B, and C. And then we label the side lengths uh, with the same letter that are across from the angles. So here's angle A. So across from angle A is little side B. And across from angle B is little b, side length b. Across from C is C. Okay, the sine law says that sine length A over sine of big A, the angle A, is equal to B over sine B, which is equal to C over sine C. Okay, any of this is true. So the ratio of a side length to the sine of its opposite angle, those ratios are the same anywhere on the triangle. Okay, now you can also turn this around. You can have sine A over little a equals sine B over little b equals sine C over little c. That works too. Okay, you just would choose the one depending on what the unknown is. If the unknown is the side length, choose this version. If the unknown is the angle, choose this version. Okay? Now the cosine law, excuse me, we label the same way. So this is angle A, angle B, and angle C. We do side length A, B, and C, like that. Okay, so the cosine law is C squared, so little c squared, so the length of a side, is equal to the other two lengths squared, so A squared plus B squared, minus 2 times A, B, so the other two lengths, times cos, so the angle that is opposite our original side length, okay? So we could also rearrange it as a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cos a, or b squared equals a squared plus c squared minus 2ac cos b, okay? You just have to make sure that this side length, the letter matches up with this angle. So these two have to be opposite from each other, an opposite side length to angle. And then these side lengths have to be the other two side lengths that aren't this one. Okay, so let's see how to actually use these with some examples. So remember, these are used in triangles that are not right triangles, okay? They can be used in right triangles. Uh, they'll work, it's just that it's way more work than you need to do because you can use Sokotoa in a right triangle. Okay, so here's three examples. So you always want to try to use sine law if you can because sine law is less work. But to use sine law, you need a known ratio of a side length to an opposite angle. Okay, so in this case, we have a known ratio of 4 to 27 degrees. So that's good. But then our unknown x, we need to know this angle as well. So 
At first you might say, oh shucks, we have to use cosine law. But actually we do know the length of this angle because we know that 89 plus 27 plus this has to add up to 180. So I can find that this is actually 64 degrees just by doing 180 minus 89 minus 27 to find that angle. So we do have this ratio and this ratio with the here, this being the unknown. So we set up our sine law always with our unknown on the top left. So x over sine 64 degrees. Okay, they're across from each other equals. Now this is the other ratio we know. We don't even need to touch the 89. It doesn't have anything to do with anything. So we put the side length first since we put the side length on the top over here over sine 27 degrees. Okay, now we just need to isolate x. So we have x equals 4 times sine 64 degrees divided by sine of 27 degrees. Okay, so in your calculator you can do 4 times sine 64 degrees, enter, then divide by sine 27 degrees, enter. You should get approximately 7.9. So this, this side length here is just under 8 units long. Okay, for this example, here's our unknown side length. So we know the opposite angle there, so maybe we can use sine law, but oh shucks, we don't have any other known ratio of an opposite angle to a side length. And there's no way to find either of these angles because we don't have enough information. So we have to use codes on law. So we set up our unknown here, x squared equals 17 squared plus 19 squared, the other two side lengths, minus 2 times 17 times 19 times cos 42 degrees. Okay, so that's the angle opposite this unknown side length. All right, so you put this all in your calculator and you get x squared equals 169.928 and then some other decimals there. Keep them in your calculator, don't round it, leave it there, and then take the square root to get approximately 13.04. So this side length is just over 13 units long. Okay, here's an example where we have an unknown angle. Okay, we can't use sine law because there's no known ratio, so we have to use cosine law. So we're going to have a side length equals, and then the other two side lengths, blah, 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 but we want to end up with cos A at the end because that's the angle we don't know. So in order to end up with cos A at the end, we need to start with the side length that's opposite the unknown angle. So this needs to be 9 squared. So then this would be 6 squared plus 9 squared minus 2 times 6 times 9 times cos A. Okay, so we're trying to isolate cos A. So we need to move uh, this over so we get 81 minus 36, um, sorry that shouldn't be a 9, this should be a 10, my apologies. So should this, oops, okay, 81 minus 36 minus 100 equals negative 120 cos A, okay, so I just simplified some of that. So this gives us minus 55 divided by minus 120 equals cos A. Okay, so A equals the inverse cos of whatever 55 divided by 120 is. Okay, you can leave the fraction like that if you want. So A gives us approximately 63 degrees. So the, the size of the angle is about 63 degrees. Okay. Now in that very, uh, that box at the bottom of your page, you can write to make sure that your calculator is always in degrees, all right, not radians or gradients. And also make sure you're always checking if you have a right triangle or a non-right triangle, because again, you should always use Sokotoa if you have a right triangle, just because it's a lot simpler and it'll save you some time. So I hope that was a good review of trigonometry from grade 10. If you have any questions about anything, let me know. Make sure you look at the examples as many times as you need and work hard. Okay, thanks for watching and I hope you learned lots.